the Joy Business Van, empowered by Joy Business and supported by Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank. Tons of electronic waste dumped every day at Agbogbloshi in Accra. Authorities are trying to figure out ways to deal with what has become a menace. Meanwhile, at Kenton Kono, not too far from the center of Kumase in the Ashanti region, some startups are turning electronic waste into something useful. 3D printers. Today, Prince Opia meets up with one of the brains behind the startup Clax 3D, Kobna Abeka Paintsil. Clax basically stands for uh, the first names of the people who started um, the group. That is Kobna, Loik, um, Ama, Kweku, and Isaac, being the S. In Ghana, we have a lot of e-waste because it's basically a dump site for the Europeans and Americans. They bring their second-hand goods here and then, um, according to studies, almost 70% of that is not actually being reused. It's just being dumped here because people don't buy it or they are rejected um, for sale. Kobna and four other co-founders did not only seek to turn e-waste into something useful, but solve another problem. In my university days, I actually graduated this year with the rest of the team. Uh, one problem that we faced was always packaging a product or packaging the product, uh, the project to something that is, should I say, not cardboard, like something that actually looks a little bit better and then people can actually relate to. And that is a challenge common to not only tech students, the inability to visualize everything that is taught. This technology, the co-founders hoped, would enhance teaching and learning in schools. 3D printers can make everyday things. It's amazing. They can produce different kinds of objects all from the same machine. It requires designing 3D or three-dimensional objects like a box to even a human body part on an ordinary home PC connected to a 3D printer, press print, and voila. It took two weeks for the five inventors who are in their 20s to build this device from screws, rods, square pipes, motors from sport printers and photocopiers, bike tubes as well as land cables collected from the Agbogulushi dam site. With the exception of the electronics which are not made in Ghana, basically everything is locally sourced. The hurdle the young tech geniuses have to climb is commercializing their product it's been one and a half years since the device was built. Since we've already been to the markets before, there's, there's been feedback on the product, how people feel about it. And then, so currently it's more of trying to put together something that they can appreciate. Um, so that has been one of the challenges, getting people to appreciate um, what you can do with the product. Secondly, it has to be with, um, like, for example, importation, etc. Where even though we are trying to be as local as possible, we, Ghana does not manufacture even resistors to begin with. So, with, in terms of certain things, we still have to get them outside. And usually the shipping costs are a big put off. So, we try as much as possible to find ways to counter that. But it's very expensive to build this kind of a device. And while they explore funding options, Kobna and his team are focusing on providing 3D printing services to sustain their startup. Because the technology is fairly new, people really do not understand like what is going on. And so we use that as a point of contact where we could come for like something, like we print out something for the general public, for them to know okay, this is what you can actually use this for. And then we, we now move on further to um, sell the actual printers themselves. So far, they have sold four printers, each worth over 2,000 Ghana cities, but their target is to sell over 500,000 printers in Africa in the coming years.